Here we are, a little bit of retard. We're gonna leave the throttle on. We're looking for gas right Oh yeah, there's gas in the carburetor. This is gonna be one kick motorcycle. You just watch this. Oh. Two. Hey everybody, Matt here at Wheels Through Time. We're back in the restoration shop today with a super fun project, a 1947 Harley Davidson knucklehead that hasn't run in over 50 years. So this bike is actually out of Ohio. A friend of ours called us up about a month ago, uh, sent me some pictures of his ultra cool 1947 Harley uh, and asked if us at the museum here, uh, we at the museum here could help him get the bike running. So in front of us, what we're looking at guys is the 1947 model EL knucklehead. Now, as many of you guys know, 1947 was the last year for the knucklehead engine, uh, kind of the pinnacle of knucklehead uh, technology or performance, you know, it's this, uh, uh, knucklehead started in 1936. So 11 year run of engines. And, uh, for many people, the knucklehead is their favorite machine. This particular example is a 61 cubic inch model, a model EL. They made them in 61s and 74s. Uh, 74 started in 1941. So for a number of years, they actually made both displacements. So the model 61 or the model EL 61 cubic inch job heralded as one of the smoothest Harley Davidson's ever produced. So this bike hadn't run in 50 years when we initially rolled it out of the trailer about an hour ago, looked the bike over, seems like it's in pretty nice shape. The bike seems to be well kept uh, and doesn't show a lot of wear. I believe the bike was probably put up in running condition. Uh, so we're going to bring it right back in running condition. Bike shows... Uh, it looks like the bike lived on dirt roads. I don't know if how well you guys are seeing it uh, through the screen there, but you know, dusty, grimy hubs. You got a, probably a quarter inch or eighth of an inch of dust and dirt caked on up front. A uh, little bit of wear up here on the fender. Dust all in the dirt and the springs. The front of the motor uh, is is really covered in grime. Little it looks like it may have been some oil leak here or there. Oil pump always caked up, of course. And as you move towards the back of the bike, you can see. A lot of time on dusty dirt road. The spokes are caked. Uh, you know, oil tank up top is just the same. Uh, but really, all things considered, the bike seems to be in pretty good shape. We've got original 1947 Speedo, uh, 29,000 miles. Now, they told me that he did a top-end job at 19,000 miles. So we're about 10,000 miles in. Uh, that's a good sign went over to the bike right when it got here and kicked it over and the bike has good compression it actually sounds really nice no odd engine noises as you guys know you need compression you need spark and you need fuel to get one of these machines going so preliminary checks uh the controls we've lubed up we've got the spark advance operating down here that controls your timing it was a little tight and stiff. Uh, lubricated all of those cables. The throttle cable, just the same. Uh, runs down to the top of your carburetor here. Inside of the gas tanks, really remarkable, guys. Chris, you got that flashlight over here? Um, inside of the gas tanks, looks like they haven't had gas in them in years. And you can tell they were dried out uh, before they put this bike away. Uh, Initially, these were actually parkerized insides, very similar to gun bluing. Um, manganese phosphate is actually the, the process, and uh, inside of the gas tanks still show their original parkerizing, so that's a very good sign. Um, so processing, getting this thing going, guys, we're already kind of starting uh, with the lubrication. Uh, bike kicks over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the transmission, make sure there's nothing milky and condensated or uh, condensed uh, uh, in, inside of the transmission. Put some fresh oil in the transmission. Uh, the oil tank, we're going to have to clean just a little bit. There's just a little bit of grimy oil on the bottom. I think what we'll probably do, Chris, is pour gas in the oil tank, swish it around, drain it. Uh, and make sure it's dried out okay. before we go putting oil in it. I don't think it'll take much to clean it up. And then I'm also going to pull this air cleaner cover off, drop the carburetor float, and put on a new rubber ducky float. And I don't think it'll take much more than that, guys. Hang with us for the process. Hopefully in an hour or so, you're going to hear this 47 knucklehead fire up. 
for the first time in 50 something years. Okay. Okay, while Chris is getting ready to drain the oil tank, one of the big factors in running a bike for the first time is what the fuel system looks like, or at least a bike that hasn't run in forever, uh, is figuring out what exactly the fuel system uh, looks like. And inside of the tanks show a lot of promise. Like I said, they were dried out inside. Uh, next step, I'm gonna go ahead and just for the sake of doing it early, instead of having to do it once we've got gas in the bike, uh, take the air cleaner off, of course, remove the carburetor float, and uh, check out how the needle and seat's operating. Needle and seat's what keeps your carburetor from overflowing, uh, and also is what allows the fuel level inside of the float uh, to be set to a proper, uh, proper height. So uh, fuel filter comes off, half inch wrench down below, and these nuts and bolts have not moved in decades and you can really tell it everything's in great shape there's not a lot of marring you can tell the bike was taken care of uh, but when they sit it's no good for them so uh, these guys did mention that every so often uh, they would pull the spark plugs out spray a little bit of penetrating oil down into the the cylinders and kick it over so that's a good sign uh, and part of the reason why when you kick this motorcycle over it still sounds pretty fresh or feels pretty fresh um, we're gonna find out what the inside of this carburetor looks like in short order wow that sucker's tight you know what a little bit of heat little bit gummy we're gonna see what the inside of this bad boy looks like wow looky there hey it's got a it's got a black float in it like it's it would have been somewhat recent okay guys this is pretty simple scenario inside of a linkered carburetor you got your low speed needle your high speed needle that's your air fuel mixture at low speed and at high speed right here's the flow pull this is what sets the fuel level in the carburetor main nozzle inside is what uh, allows that that uh, uh, fuel air mixture based on what's uh, inside of the uh, or how much fuel is inside of the flow pole this has uh, all original parts inside with an updated float. Now that's got a seal and I can tell if it won't hold suction on your lip when you suck on it, uh, you've got a lap in that needle and seat. So we're going to go ahead and replace that. Looks clean inside. Probably do a new float while I'm at it. Okay. The old float looks to be a pretty quality float. I can't tell that it was a rubber ducky like we like to use, special brand of a, like a nitrofill float. This is brand new parts, guaranteed to never sink, or at least that's what they say, I never had one sink. So, bingo, we got the needle and seat sealing really nice. Float level is incredibly crucial. Anytime you put new parts in, uh, you gotta be careful to check and possibly readjust uh, float level this one really looks to be in a great spot I'm gonna go ahead and leave that float right where it is we're a little bit ooh, just right at about a quarter maybe a little bit less so we got a new washer here Chris I'm gonna slide this back on all oh, that looks like it's in good shape a little bit of so we are getting really close guys to at least knowing if this thing's going to fire over uh, carburetor has a new float in it uh, we made sure the needle and seat seals up really nice so the carburetor shouldn't continue to overflow with gas when it starts to fill uh, we've also got a uh, new throttle plate or excuse me a new throttle shaft inside the carburetor i noticed that one of the uh, holes was stripped out and the screw wasn't capturing so we put a new throttle plate in it uh, same th or new throttle shaft excuse me same throttle plate uh, carburetor 
and fuel circuit is almost hooked back up right now. A little bit of tightening with the 9 16th wrench will be on to uh, flush in the oil tank really fast. Hooking up a battery, adding fuel and seeing if this thing will go. Threads are good. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Inside is clean. That's what we like, man. Cool. Whenever that stops draining, Chris, uh, we can for go ahead and put a, a grab the 50 weight. Uh, Harley Davidson manual actually tells you use the same and same oil in your engine uh, or same oil in your transmission as you do as the engine. So we use standard 50 weight. Uh, yeah, grab a funnel about three quarters of a quart. I think it's about 16 ounces uh, go in the uh, uh, in the transmission. Okay. Okay guys, up next, we haven't cleaned the oil tank yet, but what I wanna do here is make sure all the electrical circuitry uh, is up to snuff and doesn't have any shorts in it. We're gonna go ahead and connect the hot wire and the ground wire um, and turn our switch on, see if we've got headlights, see if we got tail light. These two guys here, Chris, we're gonna wanna uh, just hold these and we'll bolt them up under the seat. As you can see, there's some exposed wire there. So we wanna be real careful. Um, and looking for the hot, where we got? Hot wire there. Yep. You got a light up top, generator light works. That's a good sign. Headlight works. Tail light. Unbelievable. Tail light works. How about a brake light? Yep. Brake light works. Unbelievable. High low beam. Okay, so we got one beam out. Oh, if we got a high. Yeah, lows. It's, it's trying, but it's just. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Yep. We got so it's just a little bit of. Yeah, high low beam works. Unbelievable. Horn. You can hear that horn trying to work. Probably need rebuilt. Okay. Wow. So next check, of course, guys, is spark at the points. So we get spark at the points. And we'll be in really good shape. Got to kick it over a little more. Points are open. Ooh, good hot spark part. Good hot spark at the points. So, um, spark at the points doesn't necessarily mean spark at the plugs. We got to go through the coil there, but good Harley Davidson coils usually uh, last a long time. So, we're going to keep our fingers crossed. I'm going to set the battery back over here on the side. Uh, and then Chris, you and I can get to flushing that oil tank, which okay. is the only part that's going to take a little bit of shaking and muscle. So what we'll do is, uh, let's grab a gas can and we're going to go ahead and remove this seat. I've already unbolted it. So pull this seat out. Let's drop the lift back down and make this a little easier on us. Okay. Now, to make sure we don't get any oil in the engine, we're going to go ahead and put a cap on the back, back there by the feed line, or to make sure we don't get any gas in the engine, excuse me. So, 11 16 wrench will disconnect the feed line from the oil tank um, and put the cap over top of it. Uh, then we can fill it up, keep the oil tank isolated. Um, Chris, what I've also got is a copper wire brush on a long handle there that we can probably, um, you know, like I said, inside's nice, but the copper wire brush here will really allow us to kind of bend everything around and get back into some of the corners here. Um, yeah, and it's really pretty remarkable. It is not dirty in there. Here, take this out. We'll see if you guys can get a look in there through the camera. Um, you know, there's really just a little bit of leftover on the bottom, you know, is there's not, it's not metal, it's not really anything, but, you know, the last of a, 
uh, uh, the oil that would have been drained out of it. So we're gonna go ahead, put a little gas in. Yeah. Very gentle. That's a good spot for now. And then spin that. The sides are beautiful, you know, there's nothing nothing wrong with what's on the side. There was just that little bit of sludge on the bottom and it feels like it's cleaning off really nicely. There's not a ton in there. So let's, you got that in a yep. funnel. Mm. Can you get down there with the funnel? We'll get the one inch or maybe a seven eighths under there. Yeah. Pretty nasty, yeah. but I've seen a lot, lot worse. Okay, let's oil her up. And uh, should we put a seat on it? Now nah, let's run it without the seat first, just just in case there's anything else we gotta do. Let's put some gas in this and drop that battery in and see if we can do it. Chris, go ahead and hook this battery up if you would. Tail light. Right, you got a tail light. Good stuff. We are to the point of putting fuel in this bike for the first time in 50 something years. I think it's 54 years since the bike ran last. And uh, the moment of truth is upon us. We're going to see if and how this baby runs. Uh, there's no telling. I think the bike's going to run excellent. Seems to be put up in really nice shape doesn't appear to have been neglected or overused you know it's not one of those bikes that they row the wheels off and yeah. and uh put up worn out it doesn't appear that way anyway of course we won't know until we listen to how it runs but overall look at the bike you can tell that it was cared for and um yeah pretty excited oh yeah we got plenty of fuel in there so get the screwdriver out and we'll turn that fuel on and we'll tap on this uh, vibrator float. Okay, we got fuel to the carburetor. Time to kick it over. As you guys know, three prime kicks. Any thoughts on how many kicks when we're live? Write them in the comments, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm thinking three kicks. So here we are. A little bit of retard. We're going to leave the throttle on we're looking for gas right oh yeah there's gas in the carburetor it's going to be one kick motorcycle you just watch this oh two
carburetor seems like it was set perfect. Yeah. That's why you don't touch the needles on a carburetor of a bike that looks like it was put up in good condition. You start messing with things and you gotta dial it all back in. This bike seems like it's pretty dialed in, you know, it's a, not any huge hiccups. Still circulating out of the lower end. It probably had a lot of oil in the bottom. Oh yeah. There you have it guys, another success story right here at Wheels Through Time, 1947, Harley Davidson 61 inch knucklehead breathing life for the first time in 50 something years. Just incredible, it's a uh, little elbow grease and a lot of know-how and things tend to come back to life pretty good. Now as far as starting, starts and seems to run really well, you know, to make this bike a rider, you're going to have... 30 40 50 60 more hours in it you're going to have wheel bearings rebuild the brakes uh rebuild the hubs you know it's just so uh, you want to check up on all your wiring throttle controls spark advance controls all of that sort of stuff would have to be gone through uh, and of course those are pretty old tires they look good on a bike now but i wouldn't run down the road on them um but one darn nice 1947 harley davidson knucklehead it's been a pleasure to work on it Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Check out Wheels Through Time YouTube. Check us out on Facebook. Visit the museum's website, wheelsthroughtime.com. Get some raffle tickets on our knucklehead. And uh, tune back in next time. Thanks for joining us.